Because you're so important to me, I thought I should tell you these two things that stood out today. Really quick, short, so that there wasn't a lot of water to drink, brink, bring, drink, and bring. You too. And you don't have to drink it. Two things, real quick, real quick. Won't take much time. First of all, Hakamula Masood. I checked the Wikipedia who this guy is, and it, it's true. It, it's not just from today. It didn't just get the article on him in Wikipedia. Did not just get created today. He, it says, is the was the head of the Taliban in Afghanistan, and he basically was the de facto ruler of Afghanistan prior to uh, you know the ass kicking, mud wrestling that we did there. Got there. Depending who you talk to. It wasn't just created today, right? I thought, oh, it's going to have been. No, it was created in March of this year. So that's weird. But it also, according to the BBC, and so on. And the reason that's important, uh, besides, <clears throat> evidently, the war in Afghanistan no longer necessary. Boom, dude's gone. Taliban is in, and Al Qaeda is in. Uh, Taliban, I mean, is in uh, disarray. Supposedly all, I noticed an interesting thing is uh, all of the BBC and all of these major news outlets had official Taliban representatives saying. Hmm. And the Taliban uh, supposedly from those same sources now has to have a big meaning, which they will also, the reason this is of significance in Puro politics is because Peril Politics is covering robot assassins. And he was killed by a robot assassin. So, thus it's relevant. They'll all have to get together to choose a new one. And a robot assassin will kill all of them. And it'll be clean. And utopia will ensue. Item number two. The, the broadcast news, including cable types of broadcast. This is the story because, yeah, this sucks. Airport violence. Dude went in there and looking for a TSA person. Well, to me, it's like the movie Brazil. There's a certain point where you have so much of this, and there's because is it terrorism? Well, it's not international terrorism, but he was going for a TSA person who was the first to die in the line of duty. You know, and probably the nicest one there. You know how this shit goes? Just his radar, probably the nicest, most friendly, helpful TSA person ever hired. Just hired yesterday, about to make the TSA work like a breeze and and be you know, efficient and, and do its job all the better. The re it's, it's crazy. <clears throat> but what we need to do is we need to realize, okay, that's the world we live in. We live in Brazil, and our goal is to keep the airport running when that happens. <clears throat> we don't need more TSA. We don't need more people taking their shoes off. After, I flew... A week after 9-11, I was, it was one of the first days, or maybe, no, maybe it was two weeks, or maybe it was a week after the airport was opened, and um, it was running pretty smooth, but they had guys with machine guns, National Guard and military guys all over. I think that's what makes it less likely to get very far with the gun. Those people standing right there next to the TSA. Now, since this stuff doesn't happen much in airports... What you'd have to do is you'd have to rotate guys in from actual war zones so that they were on their toes and a little bit edgy because the real problem there is day in and day out, it's not going to happen. You, if you want people that are experience, experienced and are actually expecting someone to show up like that, even though mostly they won't, you're going to have to rotate them in from all the places that you really do get shot at. You know, like rotate in Army Rangers or something and just fill those airports. So when this happens, it's like a body, like an organism. And it's, if it's a lone gunman, you only zero in on where the disturbance is happening. The moment a second person somewhere else starts something, then you can start shutting down whole, you know, uh, terminal areas, depending on the architecture of the airport. Right. And if there should be a third or more than two you know, then you start cordoning off not just the whole airport, but the surrounding area, because you, you have an honest-to-goodness attack at that point. 
but you can't rush to, to panic. You can't cl close down the whole thing and stop airplanes from landing just because of one nutty guy with the gun. Big deal. If we want to have a lot of guns over here in America, we've got to learn that, well, when one, just one nut with the gun goes off, it's not that hard to put a stop to it. Let's not ruin the economy of L.A. for a week. And, uh, and, and we, that is more safe. It's, it's, there's a danger to react, to overreacting. So we're, and I'm not saying this is easy. I'm saying you need to have a lot of like SWAT team members all the time in the airport. And the money you save not shutting it down totally, you spend on making this very localized and also very much less likely to happen. I think it's very likely a guy to get away with going in with a gun one guy talking to CNN is saying, oh, I saw an assault rifle. You know, if he was in there with an assault rifle, that's amazing. That's pretty hard to conceal. And if you had a bunch of Army Ranger level quality guards there rotating in from actual combat situations and careers um, and, and risky situations, security situations, they would notice the guys that, you know, had the pool cue case or the rifle case or trench coats. They would probably not be able or be as likely to try to kill somebody. And just do it that way if it's really going to be that sort of a security situation where it doesn't happen often, but when it does, these people should not get away with it. If we're going to pretend that our airports are secure from this kind of thing, then we just need to face that usually it's going to be a lone gunman and the idea is to keep the airport running because it, that's actually the most safe thing. When people are all backed up and all of this panic starts to happen, that's less safe than if you cordon off where the people actually are with what's actually going on. And I'm not saying they didn't do that at LAX. I think they did. I think we can just up the level by having personnel that are there ready for it. Save the... Don't get the nudie scanners, sell all those to some country that still wants them, we ought to be able to do that, and then spend that money on actual experts to swoop in in situations like this that are hired from situations where there really is the threat because of course most airports nothing had ever happened. Alright, there you go, Bureau Politic for the day. Now you're supposed to take a pot shot one of those two ideas, but you probably won't.